right. Welcome back, everybody. We are so glad that you decided to join us again. Today, we are here with Senior Pastor Will Davis Jr. Hi, Lauren. Hi, friends. And I am Lauren Thurston. Great to see we you guys. We are both pastors here at Austin Christian Fellowship. Yes, he is the senior pastor and the one with all the information. There you go. I am going to be throwing Overrated. at him. <laughs> Some very difficult <laughs> questions today. And we have a very exciting topic. We have heard from a couple of you <laughs> about the subject of Nephilim. Some of you are going to say, what the heck is that? I've never heard of Bless that. Bless you. Nephilim. Bless Nephilim. you. Nephilim. Um, and some of you have very strong opinions I about I want to this. say to all of you who wrote about Nephilim, get a life, okay? Really? It's like fascinating. Like you guys need to read the rest of the Bible. That's all I have to say. A nicer Lauren and way, I are going round and round about this one, so be ready. You may see sparks fly. A nicer way to fly. say what Will just said is... Read all of the Bible. Read Genesis 6, but don't stop there. This is there. why you don't start in Genesis. Get to Jesus. <laughs> but let's talk about exactly talk about what it. Genesis has to say, um, specifically Genesis 6, um, because there are a lot of very interesting opinions out there about this. And the Bible does not say a lot. So it, the first thing I'm going to do is share For a you. reason. It doesn't say a lot you, for a we'll reason. We'll get to your part in just a moment. <laughs> Here is what... Genesis 6 says about the Nephilim, um, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with humans forever for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. And then that leads up to the Lord seeing the wickedness of humans and then enter yeah. the flood where he right, wipes out basically the human race. All right, 50,000 views. What translation was that? This is NIV. Okay, thank you. Who, now before we get to the Nephilim, who are the sons of God referenced in this passage? Well, if I could answer that question, I'd be a rich man. Um, the, the phrase can mean angelic beings. The phrase can mean humans. Um, some, so you have to decide which commentary, which commentator you want to follow. I don't really necessarily adhere to any of these theories. I've got my own. But it, it could be that these were demonic. The word Nephilim... Um, is a participle. It's from a word that means to fall. Mm -hmm. It's like seraphim are burning ones, nephilim are fallen ones. Fallen ones, yes. It's plural. And it could be that they were the sons of God were um, angelic beings, demonic beings that um, are referenced there. It could be the human descendants of Seth, who is considered the bloodline of Christ. I'm not sure I buy any of that, but go ahead. Okay, so you're not buying the fallen not ones or the sons well, of Seth, so what's the third I can tell you, option? I'm trying not to get ahead of you. Um, the reason I don't buy that is it says they procreated with women. Mm -hmm. Demons can't do that. Demons cannot, there's no other account of demons taking on human form. Um, and if that is, in fact, the case, then why did God destroy the human race? If something it was something that demons did, um, that it could be men who were possessed by demons, and the demons used the men to procreate with the women and create this different generation of humans. But it, that whole thing to me sounds real flimsy. I'll tell you my theory in a minute, but go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my theory for the for the end. Well, it's interesting because <laughs> I've read extensive commentary on this. That's um, part of the problem, is you've read so problem, much about I this. Because I overthink yes. everything. Yes. Really? Um, but this it's is called the Overthinkers Podcast, by the way. Be curious. I'm it, very okay. curious. So some people interpret Nephilim as the fallen ones, like you said. Some people refer to them. Some translations say the giants. And there's a Gigantus. reason for that. That's a mistranslation. There's nowhere in Genesis that it says they're giants. Okay? That's going to, Gen to no Numbers chapter 13. The, Sep the Septuagint, forgive me, the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, calls them giants. The Hebrew text does not in Genesis. In Numbers 13, the spies come out and say, the Nephilim are in the land, we cannot go in there. The spies were giving a dishonest report. They were exaggerating and saying, we shouldn't go in the land, it's bad, we're like grasshoppers. And Joshua said, no, we got this, let's go. And they said, we saw the Nephilim there. 
So well, they said we saw the Nephilim, but the Nephilim were not, in we, fact, we there don't, in we, numbers. They, they may have been there. We don't know. But I'm inclined, to, I'm inclined to be skeptical of the spies' report, given that their whole agenda was don't go into the land. So they, were, they said, it's a beautiful land, but the, we can't go in. The people are bad. We saw the Nephilim there. That was maybe a fear tactic of these evil spies. We don't have any evidence. We do know that giants existed because Goliath was around in the time of Saul. So giants still existed, but we don't know if the Nephilim were... Genesis says they survived the flood, which is curious. Um, Wait, when does Genesis say they survived I think, the flood? I think it says it in chapter 6, in those days and in those days after. So there's a lot of thought that the, the, the Nephilim were around after the flood, which means either this act of the sons of God procreated with the sons of men again, or the DNA survived, or there's something else going on. It's very murky. It is very murky because it also doesn't say, and forgive me, when it talks about the sons of God mating with the daughters of man, it doesn't say that the Nephilim were the hybrid, the result of yeah, this. It just says did. sons of God mated with daughters of man. That's right. It and the Nephilim were on the earth. So yeah. can we assume that the Nephilim were the offspring or... Is it separate? The Nephilim were on the earth, and this was happening. So read the text again, Lauren, because I think you're right. I, let me acknowledge it, Lauren. I think you're right. It's a first. We're going to go hey, with that. Hey, look at we're that. having a moment. We got that on Kumbaya. camera. Woo. Anyway, um, you're right. It says that the sons of God procreated with women, and that was caused God to judge the world. Mm -hmm. Next verse, the Nephilim were there. Is that what it says? Yes. Is that the the Nephilim were on the earth okay. in those days and also afterward. But the thing is, it doesn't say anything negative about the Nephilim specifically. Mm -mm. That they it were men of renown. It says that they were heroes of old and men of renown. Which almost sounds complimentary. Right. Okay. So in here, this is kind of like a juxtaposition. Like, it's like, here's this chapter six is titled The Wickedness in the World. I know. And it starts with sons of God mating with daughters of man. Then we have Nephilim, and they are heroes of old, men of renown. Then we go back to how wicked the world is. But you're right. If God eliminated... Wait, say that part again. How wicked... No, you're right. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're sorry. right. Sometimes. <laughs> um, but if God eliminated the human race through the flood, mm -hmm. except for Noah, how did the Nephilim stay on the earth afterwards? Okay, so here's my theory. Okay, let's go. Um, the fallen ones references the Genesis 3 effect in humans. And that... There was sin took a while to do its work, and that what God created in Adam was a much greater human than what you and I are. And sin has greatly reduced us. We live 80 years as opposed to 400 or 500 or 600, which mm -hmm. they did in those days. And it could just be that human DNA had not yet been completely affected by sin. And the Nephilim were the ones who had fallen in Genesis 3, but they still had the original DNA of Genesis 1 and 2, of Eden. And that the, the evidences of what God had originally created hadn't fully taken effect. And that survived the flood because it's in human DNA. And so it, it was around for a while. One theory is that all these guys are, are evidence that sin was taking effect, but it hadn't fully done yet. And they were what humans originally looked like and lived like. It's the we can rebuild him, six million dollar man. <laughs> Well, it was the, the Genesis 1 and 2 human who hadn't yet been affected by sin. So they were bigger, stronger, faster, lived longer, smarter than we were. And one theory is it's just, it's just the, the holdovers of, that hadn't quite been wiped out yet by the effect of Genesis 3. Because sin took a minute. So I wish you guys could see Lauren's face. The this, wheels are turning. Mm, this is, <laughs> it feels like we're saying something about women here because we're saying the sons of God, but the daughters of humans. Yeah, I think sons of God is a reference to men. Um, I think it's poetic language. Why I, are we not daughters of God? Why is it daughters of humans? Because and it, was sons a, of God? it was a male centered Hebrew culture, and that's how they wrote. That's how Moses wrote it. It was, it was just how they, that was, it was a reference to humanity, but it was always masculine. That's all it was. I think it's poetic language. Sons of God, daughters of men. Okay. I just think it's poetic language. I don't think it's necessarily a slam at women. Um, and I think some interpretations of this do slam women because they make them descendants of Seth or Cain, and all the feminine side's bad and all the masculine side's good because the men are descendants of Seth, the good guys. I think that's very insulting to women. Mm -hmm. So this phrase— Well, we are in the murk right, right. now. We are so in the murk. 
And this isn't this doesn't affect your salvation, how you feel about Thank Nephilim. You for I just that. want to put that out there. This is a fascinating topic to talk about because it's in the Bible and we're students of the Bible and we want to talk about it. But it doesn't mean if if you and I disagree on this, it doesn't but mean that both of us are not going to be in heaven together. One of us is going to be there. One for only sure. one, only the right one. <laughs> um, but here's another interesting commentary. Noah spoke so little, Noah, Moses, excuse me, spoke so little about the Nephilim. There is some commentary that says it's because back when he was writing this, he didn't have to explain who they were because everyone already knew. knew. Oh, yeah, the Nephilim. Yeah, because Joshua had referenced it. Right. In the spies. So they, they, um, you're right, they all knew what it was. So who did they believe the Nephilim to be? It's a great question. The heroes of old, the men of renown. Great question. So, so the, one of the things I want you guys to think about is whatever happened between, quote, the sons of God and the daughters of men, the result was God said, I got to wipe out an entire race. So um, I have a hard time putting that off on anything other than humanity. Like, if it's, I don't, let's, you hadn't said this yet, I don't think it's aliens. I don't think aliens came down and invaded the human race. There's some thought, there's, and it's actually an intriguing theory, that the reasons demons wanted to procreate with the women was to pollute the bloodline so that Christ right. couldn't come. Right. The one who would crush the head of Satan, prophesied mm-hmm. in Genesis 3. There have been multiple attacks on the bloodline of Christ throughout history to preempt, including the killing the babies right. in Jerusalem. So that's not a weird theory, but I, I have a problem with the demons' ability to become human and take on human form and procreate. They can't. Um, they don't have a human DNA to proc- procreate with. They're angels, so they can't reproduce. So I really have a problem with that. But I do think the assault on Jesus' bloodline is really, in- really interesting. But whatever happened, God held humanity responsible for it. Now, there's some conversation in First Pe- Second Peter 3 and the book of Jude that talks about fallen angels mm-hmm. from the times of Noah. Yes. And some people connect this there. And that there's judgment for them, but he still held the human race accountable for mm-hmm. whatever happened there. Mm-hmm. That to me is the point. Not that there were these angelic beings who were walking around trying to um, procreate. It was that humans were guilty because of it. Mm-hmm. That to me is the sad point of the text that we fell into a state that was so degrading that God, there's what the 120 years can either be interpreted. It took 120 years for the rain to come, and Noah had 120 years to build the ark and preach the gospel, or that he shortened humans' lifespan to 120 years. Mm-hmm. Either one's bad. Right. Go ahead. We need, I mean, we're going to have to do a whole other episode on Noah and how he built this ark and if it was built supernaturally. Some people believe that Noah may have been a giant. Yeah. But there's no way for us to know no that way for to know. sure. So you're you're not saying that the Nephilim were giants. I don't think Genesis says that. Okay. I think that the Greek translation of Genesis says that, and that's not the original scripture. And they were referenced as giants um, in Numbers 13. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw giants in the land. Then we saw the Nephilim. Right. That's where that comes from. There's no indication in Genesis six that they were giants. Well, what about? The, the reference in Amos where it talks about the Amorites whose height was like the height of cedars and they were as strong as the oaks. Like, if you're as tall as the cedar, you're a giant. What is this race of people <laughs> that not, not if you're a cedar about? in Central Texas. Right. <laughs> okay. That's just, <laughs> that's just a weed. Backyard. That's just a weed, okay? <laughs> it needs to be taken out. Can we all just have a moment where we thank God for what he's going to do with cedars in eternity? Anyway, yeah. they're not going to be in heaven. No cedars in heaven. I think that's evidence for the human DNA, that um, ha- the, the effects of um, Genesis 3 that haven't completely n- snuffed out, like creation still resembles the beauty and the power of God, even though it's muted. Well, humanity does too. And I think the fact that some people have such significant DNA, that they're, you know, the NBA level or greater in their height and their stature, tells me there's that leftover remnant of what we used to be. In Genesis 1 and 2. Yes, ma'am. And, and I think I think it's um, fascinating to think about what humans were physically. Mm-hmm. Think about Adam and the intelligence to name the animals. Right. The brain level of, oh, that's what he understood about biology. 
um, and nature and the laws of nature. I, we don't we don't have any prototypes of what we were like then. Right. So w- is there a possibility that we are physically much greater than we are now as a whole? And there's still examples of that on the planet today. There clearly were in the biblical days. I have no problem with that. But where are the skeletal remains of these giants? Well, there uh, there probably weren't that many of them. I don't know. But the, we still have giants walking around. You think you hear about people that are over seven feet tall in China now and then. Right. Still. And the Chinese as a race aren't particularly tall. So what is that? Well, it could be left over. And we won't get into conspiracy theories. Today. 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 But there are some, cons- I, don't, I don't even want to call them conspiracy theories. There are theories out there that there are skeletal remains of giants, that the Smithsonian does have them. You are such but it a does conspiracy not theorist. fit into you the are, theory of you evolution. You are that person. You're becoming that person. <laughs> not, you know the commercial, don't become your parents. You're becoming that commercial, that person. A theory by definition cannot be proven fact. It's just a theory. Oh I think Lord. it's smart to be aware of all the <laughs> theories that are out there so you can make a well-rounded decision. But... The we've covered. I have Nephilim. a theory. You're overthinking this. I ov- exactly. it's the Overthinkers podcast. Yes, and God gave us a curious mind, but He just the didn't logo give for us the podcast the is going to be Lauren with a little body and her big <laughs> giant head. That's true. All of the knowledge. <laughs> so just a head. I do want to get into. There are some theories also, and you kind of touched on this a little bit. There are a lot of people that believe that the what humans kind of see as aliens, um, as activity out in the stars, that that could possibly be spiritual activity. But before the podcast, you said that you didn't believe that the activity happening in the stars is demonic, necessarily nephilim activity. nephilim ne- I nephilim just made up that word. That's a great word. But... What what say you to... I, I, I have had... I tell Lauren before we started, I sit out in the backyard at night and watch the stars, and, I, and I'll see flashes. There are other times I will be, like, resting with my eyes closed in my office for a few minutes, and I'll see flashes of light. And um, I, I think that's... I think the spiritual world leaks. Mm. I think sometimes there's little leaks. I've heard things that I cannot explain on mountains that I shouldn't have heard, like audible horn sounds in my head that I thought was a car on a mountain trail and obviously wasn't a car. Twice it happened. I think the spirits of war leaks and sometimes that can be flashes of light or could be sounds um, or other things. So let's, I think it's angelic. Let's go with I'm very open to that we have encounters with spirit. I've seen a demon. It wasn't light though. I actually saw a demon one night in our house. And no, I wasn't asleep, and no, I wasn't inebriated, and no, I wasn't, I wasn't hallucinating. It was real. When I confronted it, it disappeared. So I do think there's a real opportunity that if we're alert and sometimes in seeking the Lord, we'll, we'll see things that indicate a spiritual realm. I want to be emphatic in saying I don't believe in aliens. I don't think it's wrong to believe in aliens. But the reason I don't believe in aliens is I don't think the Bible indicates it at all. Right. Well, and also... A lot of the the beliefs out there that support the existence of aliens fall more in line with evolution. There's not a lot of creationists that have the point of view that I mean, not all evolutionists yeah, because, believe yeah. in aliens, but very few creationists believe in yeah. aliens because the scientific proof is just not there. And then it begs the question: Did the fall of Adam and Eve, the fall of man, if there are in fact beings on other planets, did it affect all of the planets? It's just not yeah. accounted for. Yeah. It's just not in It's fun to think about, but it's it's in nowhere in the scriptural text is indicate. In fact, I think the scriptures hint, if not more than hint, that, let me use a phrase that's not geographically or cosmically accurate. We're the center of God's universe. Mm -hmm. We're not the center of the universe. Earth is not. not. But that God did everything to wow humans. Yes. That's what I mean by that. the pinnacle of his creation. Yeah. And I just, I don't know of any indication biblically that there's life on other planets. And the more we learn about science, the more... It's it's unlikely that we we shouldn't be here. We're now chasing the topic. Forgive me, but the the probability of uh, life happening, the odds are against us. Mm-hmm. We should not be here. So the likelihood of it happening on any other place randomly is right. equally impossible. So that's why I think, from the God standpoint, we're the center of the universe. Yeah, I would agree with that. We agree. I think you're right. Will there you go, Lawrence? Say it again. I think you're okay. right. All right. But at the end of the day, I just want to reinforce this 
focus on Jesus. <laughs> like that's the most important thing in this whole book. But I agree, this is fascinating. I also agree, we don't clearly have all the answers because so little is spoken about the Nephilim. Um, I do think it's an interesting topic to, to dive into. If you guys happen to have more questions about it though, you can always ping us back at acfellowship.org slash podcast or go to the website and search podcast. Can There's I, a little I gotta, field I there. I gotta insert something here. Okay. I, wanna make, I just need a good bottom line. I know an atheist who hangs his hat on Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. Hmm. And the statement that we, they'll be like us, we got to do something about it, and that's that's his reason for not believing in God, and that is such a smokescreen. Let the Bible interpret itself. Mm -hmm. Let the vague passages and the unclear passages, like Genesis six and Genesis eleven, be read in light of the clear passages. Mm -hmm. Don't don't allow yourself to get stuck on something so remote like Nephilim, when it clearly wasn't an emphasis in Scripture, or he would have said more about it. Lauren said it. Get to the Jesus part and hang your hat there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I interrupted you. You did interrupt me. I was yes. just telling them how Only, to the interact time. with it's the podcast. The first time. If you guys want to hear more about this <laughs> or if you want to hear about anything else, go to our website and let us know because we want your questions. We want to talk about what you guys are talking about. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, Will, for diving into this very controversial Fun topic. Stuff. We will see you guys soon.